This next distribution, the normal distribution, is a very important example of a continuous distribution. If you're going to be doing any probability and statistics later on, there's a very good chance that what you're going to be using is the normal distribution. It is a random variable that has a specific PDF that is given by this form. We'll see a graph of what that looks like in a second. You might be puzzled to see this term here, 1 divided by the square root of 2 over pi. This is just to make sure that this is indeed a probability density function to ensure that the integral over minus infinity to infinity will be equal to 1. The corresponding CDF, we call it uppercase phi, which is the probability that your random variable z will be below some threshold z, which by definition is just the integral from minus infinity to z, this threshold here, of the PDF. And because z, the original variable, is now an upper bound, we're going to use a different variable to talk about the PDF. I'm using t here. Of course, you can pick any variable. Any variable z that has this cumulative distribution function, we say that it has a standard normal distribution, or rather that it follows a standard normal distribution, and we write that as z follows n01. I'll explain what these things mean later when we talk about general normal distributions. Now, one annoyance, if you want, about the normal distribution is that it is a fairly straightforward PDF here. This isn't too complicated. It's an exponential. It's a polynomial. It's a fairly simple one. Unfortunately, there is no analytical expression to describe the CDF that only uses what we call simple functions. Right? The integral exists because the area under the curve exists, but there's no nice function that describes what that area would be. This is what the PDF looks like. Here I'm using x instead of z, but you know this would be 1 over square root of 2 pi e to the minus x squared over 2. You notice that when x goes to infinity, this goes to 0. When x goes to minus infinity, this goes to 0. In this case, in this example, the probability density function never goes above 1. It doesn't even go above 0.4, but it doesn't matter because the important thing is that the area under the curve is actually equal to 1. It is a probability density function. The corresponding CDF looks like this. When x goes to minus infinity, this goes to 0. When x goes to positive infinity, this goes to 1, which sort of makes sense. We've noticed that the PDF was symmetrical. Right? It looks the same before x that it does after x. At least it's, it's a reverse image, which means that we would expect the value of x equal to 0 corresponding to the halfway mark for the CDF. That makes sense. And what I've said is that this function here, it has an expression, again, it's written in terms of x. This would be capital or uppercase phi at x. And what is that equal to? Well, it's actually equal to this thing. This is how we define this function. There is no easier way to describe this function than to say, let's say we pick a specific value of x right here, uppercase x is this area. the best we can do. Well, you can compute the expectation 
and the variance um, by computing the integrals from minus infinity to infinity here. You're integrating over the whole thing. And if you do it, and I won't do it with you, but if you did it, you would notice that the um, interval of z times the PDF is actually zero. This makes sense because this is a function which is odd. By that I mean that it is symmetrical around the origin and the integral of any odd function has to be equal to zero, assuming that it's integrated over a domain which is symmetrical. Remember the computational formula for the variance, it is going to be the expectation of z squared minus the square of the expectation, but we know what the expectation is, it's zero. So the square of zero is zero, so that disappears, which means that the variance of z will just be the expectation of z squared. This is, we replace z squared, we place z squared here and we integrate the product of z squared with the PDF. And if you work it out, again, we won't, you'll get a value of one, which means that the standard deviation is also one, the square root of one is one. So the zero in the description of the standard normal refers to the mean, the expectation, <coughs> the expectation, and the one, well not this one actually, sorry, and the one refers to the variance. Now, in this special case, the variance and the standard deviation are the same, but in general, it is the variance that goes in there, not the standard deviation. There's other quantities you can compute, like as we've seen, the CDF at zero, that's the probability that your random variable will be smaller than zero, and that value is one half. Another value of interest, the limit, as I said, minus infinity is zero, positive infinity is one. Uh, if you want to compute, say, the cumulative distribution function at one, there you need to compute the probability that your random variable is smaller than or equal to one, which would mean, if we go back a little bit here, if this is one, you're interested in this area, specific area here, Now, given that we cannot compute it directly because we don't have a simple analytical form for the CDF, how do we come up with a value here? Well, you can use tables or you can use R or other statistical software to compute these values. In R, you compute this probability by calling P norm and one gives you about 84%, 4.13 to be exact. Now let's say you have a standard normal variable, z which follows uh, n0, 1. You'll pick some sigma which is positive and any mu, any real value mu. And out of this choice, together with the standard normal variable, you will create a new random variable which we call x. x will be mu, the mean plus sigma z. Now this new variable is such that if you subtract mu from it and divide by sigma, you will recover z, which you know to be a standard normal random variable. Now the cumulative distribution function of x, not of z, that would be the probability that x is smaller than or equal to little x. Now we know what x is, we've defined it by mu plus sigma z. We want this to be smaller than or equal to x. And now if we subtract mu and divide by sigma, we are left with the probability that z, the standard normal, should be smaller than or equal to this new value, x minus mu divided by sigma. So in fact, what we've shown here is that if z is a standard normal distribution, if mu is some real number, 
and sigma some positive number, then the new variable x, which is mu plus sigma z, follows a normal distribution as well. It just it follows a normal distribution with a different expectation and a different variance. Because you can compute its commutative distribution function by applying the commutative distribution function of the standard norm normal of the standard normal to a different input. Not little x anymore, but x minus mu divided by sigma. And since we know that the PDF of a function is just the derivative of the CDF, we can compute what the PDF itself would be. The derivative of this big phi, which we can compute because we know the derivative of uppercase phi is going to be little phi or lowercase phi, and here we apply the chain rule. Right? So if you start with a random variable z, and you multiply it by sigma add to mu. If z is a standard normal, x will also follow a normal distribution. It's just not standard anymore, it's general. And we'll say that x is normal with mean mu, the quantity that we've added to the product of sigma and z here, which is its expectation, because the expectation of z is zero. That's the case because z is a standard normal and the variance will just be sigma squared if you work it out according to the rules of how we work with variances of linear combinations so x follows a normal distribution with mean mu and with variance sigma squared divide it like this every single normal variable is a linear transformation of the standard normal. It's just that the mu and the sigma will change for every general variable. In many books, you have these tables here that allow you to compute the values of the CDF for the standard normal distribution. And you can use these values set here to compute the CDF for the original variable x once you've identified the mu and the sigma. So this here refers to the tables, or in the case of r to the function p norm for the standard normal distribution. You don't need to have a different table for any general normal distribution because you can recover it from the values of the standard normal. Give you an idea as to what we mean here. All of this is happening for values greater than zero. So you pick a point here, which is above the midpoint. Let's say this point here is equal to, I don't know, let's say that it's equal to 1.17. So let's say you want to compute CDF at 1.17. What you need to do is to find the entry that corresponds to 1.17. Here's 1, here's 1 1.10, 1 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. It's this value here. So what this would be saying is that the full area of the curve going to minus infinity is about 87.9% or 0.879. Now, if you're interested in, say, for instance, the value of 1.175, which isn't one of the values in this table, well, you might actually say that this is going to be, roughly speaking, the average of what happens between 1.17 and 1.18, okay? If Z is your standard normal, well, can you compute these probabilities? What's the probability that Z would be smaller than or equal to 0 0.5? You'd go back to the table and say, let me try to find 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is exactly this one here. So that phi at 0 0.5 is equal to this value, 69.15% 
or 0.6915. What's the probability that z would be smaller than minus 0 0.3? And now here you're going to find something odd. There isn't an entry for negative values, at least not in this table. You will use the fact that the curve though is symmetrical, right? If this is meant to be minus 0 0.3, I can try to find the opposite side, 0 0.3. Now, be careful. If I compute the value of phi at 0 0.3, or if I look it up, I am not getting the area before minus 0 0.3. I'm getting the full area, right? But what I'm interested in, because it's symmetrical, whatever happens before 0 0.3, this area here will be the same as this one. So phi at minus 0 0.3, that's going to be the same thing as 1 minus phi at 0 0.3. In general, phi at any point z is the same as 1 minus phi minus z, and z could be positive or negative, right? So if you find phi of 0 0.3, there's this value here, 0.6179, so that phi at minus 0 0.3 will be 1 minus phi at 0 0.3, which is to say 1 minus 0 0.6179. I write an equal sign here, I really mean about, approximately, and if you do the computation, you will find that it's about 38.21%. If you try to compute the area under the curve for two, or between two points, this one, well, you can first compute the area under the curve from minus infinity to 0 0.3, so all the way from here to here, and then you'll subtract what happens from here to here. Get rid of it. You're left with this one. Probability, <coughs> probability that z is smaller than 0 0.3, you get that from the table. Well, we've already done it. We've worked with 0 0.3 before. We knew it's 6.179, and the probability that z would be smaller than 0 0.1, we can go back and look it up, right? 0 0.1, there you go, and you get a value of about 7.8% or 0 0.0781. And that also works if you're working with negative numbers. At any rate, some tables have the value of the CDF for negative numbers, others don't. If you don't, it's not the end of the world because you can use the symmetry of the PDF to compute them. If you do well, you would just read them off automatically from the table. Now, here's another example that might be a little bit more instructive. Let's say that the wait time in minutes for a coffee, show up at 9 a.m., is distributed normally with mean 5 and standard deviation 0 0.5. So we often start our problems by stating this. This is the assumption. This is the model assumption. Now, in reality, that's impossible. It is not possible for the wait time for coffee to be normally distributed with mean five and standard deviation. It's not even possible for it to be normally distributed with any mean and any standard deviation because it's conceivable that the wait time, if it was normally distributed with mean five and standard deviation 0 0.5 would be negative. And that's not something that makes sense. Nevertheless, this is an assumption that we make because it's gonna be pretty difficult to get values that are normally distributed that would be smaller than zero. It could happen, but it's rarely ever going to happen. So it is a reasonable assumption to make, even if it's not the most realistic assumption. The question could be, what's the probability that the wait time is going to be at most six minutes? So X is the wait time. It follows a normal distribution would mean five, and standard deviation 0.5, remember what goes in here is not the standard deviation, it's the variance. So we need to square the standard deviation. And the standardized random variable, if we subtract from our random variable the mean and divide by the standard deviation, so 
z is equal to x minus mu divided by sigma. This follows a standard normal distribution. We are interested in computing the probability that we wait no more than six minutes. What's the probability that x would be smaller than or equal to six? I draw this here. This is my mean of five. This is the value of six. I'm interested in this area from minus infinity to six. So I mean, it's possible that I'll be waiting some negative amount of time here. Okay, so what I can do, because I don't have a table for this specific normal distribution, I'm going to subtract five from both sides of the equality, x minus five, it's going to be smaller than 6 minus 5 if x is smaller than 6. And because I'm dividing by a positive number, I can divide on both sides without changing the uh, direction of the inequality. So now this standardized random variable here, and that's just z. And well, I have 6 minus 5 divided by 0 0.5. For the time being, I've chosen not to simplify the expressions, just to remind you this is something that is obtained by subtracting the mean and dividing by the standard deviation. This is an expression that we will see over and over again, so I just want to make sure you remember the form that it's supposed to take. This is just by definition the cumulative distribution function, 6 minus 5 divided by 0.5, and now we'll evaluate it, that's just 2. So I'm looking for, on the table, the value of phi at 2, which is to say the probability that z would be smaller than or equal to two. Let's see it right here, about 97%. So it looks, according to the table, as though I'm 97.7% likely to wait fewer than six minutes. Another example, imagine that your bottles of beer are filled in such a way that the actual volume isn't 375. It's going to change from one bottle to the next. It will never exactly be 375, but perhaps what you've noticed by doing some experiments is that the mean value is 376.1 and the standard deviation is 0 0.4 milliliters. So we'll assume that the actual volume of liquid in a beer bottle is normally distributed with mean 376.1 and standard deviation 0.4. So what's the probability that if you pick a bottle at random, the volume of beer in it will be less than 375 millimeters? So what we know is that X is a general normal distribution. It follows this one here. Normal would mean 376.1 and standard deviation 0.4, hence of variance 0.4 squared. So the standardized normal for this specific case would be the original random variable x from which we subtract the mean and then we divide this by the standard deviation 0.4. That is going to be a standard normal. The probability that interests us is the probability that x would be smaller than 375 milliliters, the advertised volume. Well, as before, I can subtract on both sides of the equality by 376.1 and divide on both sides of the inequality by 0.4 without changing the direction of the inequality because this is a positive number. I get a value here of minus 1.1 over 0 0.4, which eventually we'll see is really minus 2.75. And this expression here becomes our standardized normal random variable. So I'm looking for the probability that z will be smaller than or equal to minus 2.75. I go back to the table. I don't have the minus 2.75 here. I could look at the probability Two point seventy-five. I also don't have 2.75, at least not on this version of the table. On the version that you would have for your tests, you would be able to see all the way to these numbers and you'd be able to compute that this thing is about 3%, this value here, right? Because phi of 2.75 would be um, 
Sorry, I fucked it. I have to off here. On the tables you would have for your tests, you would be able to see that the cumulative distribution function at minus 2.75 is about 0.3%, or rather you might see that the value of phi at 2.75 would be 99.7%, 0.997. I want to try that with a different table. As a last example, you might be asked to find values, A, B, or C in this case, where specific statements about the probabilities of the normal distribution are met. Now, I am not going to do these examples with you, but I strongly urge you to go through them and to make sure you understand how to work out the answers.